This topic may seem like one that you have the obvious answers to, but the reality is I want to do a deep dive into some of the science behind what can make you a morning person and what doesn't make you a morning person. But I want to help you become a little bit more of a morning person if it's something that you're after. So before we start, let me preface this with this. A lot of times we are either genetically morning people or we're not. Okay, some people do better in the morning than others. But the fact is, I talk to a lot of people, and when I'm working with people, a lot of times they want to become morning people. And they want to become morning people because metabolism is better in the morning, it's easier to burn fat if you work out in the morning, it's easier to become more nutritionally aligned with your goals if you get up early in the morning, and overall, fatty acid utilization is just better in the morning simply because of the catecholamines, all the adrenaline, cortisol, and things like that that are elevated. So the fact is, you can get more out of your diet, more out of your workouts if you are a morning person. So why not create a video that helps people become a morning person using science? So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, make sure you turn on notifications so you can see whenever I go live or post videos. So let's get right to it. Okay. The first one that I recommend that you do is not hitting the snooze button. And you're probably thinking, Thomas, this is lame content. I know not to hit the snooze button. Well, I want to back this up with some science, you know, because researchers talk about this topic. And they talk about it because it's something known as sleep inertia, sort of like a momentum that we gain when we go to sleep. And if we ever wake up in the middle of the night and then go right back to bed, it's this sleep inertia that allows us to get back into that rapid eye movement sleep faster than ever. So normally we have to go through these different phases of sleep. But with sleep inertia, we have this momentum that puts us there a lot faster. So when you get up and you hit the snooze button and you go right back to bed, your body's trying to protect your sleep and it takes on that sleep inertia and it pushes you back into a deep sleep really fast. You start going through the phases again really quick and then your alarm goes off in 10 minutes and you're in deep sleep probably deeper than you were the first time your alarm went off because your body did everything that it could to reallocate hormones and reallocate neurotransmitters and melatonin to help you get to sleep harder and faster. So you end up messing up that sleep inertia. This is a totally normal process and it's there to protect your sleep throughout the night. So don't mess with it. If you need to get up a little bit later, set your alarm later so you get up with your alarm the first time, not the second, third, or fourth. Okay. The next one I want to talk about is really fascinating. And again, it might seem obvious at first, but that's exposure to sunlight. So when you get up in the morning and you open up the curtains and you get a lot of natural light, it actually makes a very big difference in how your body responds to things overall. So there's one study that was published in the Journal of Current Biology. This one's really, really cool. So I'm gonna lay it out for you. Basically what happened was there was a number of test subjects and they measured them for a course of two weeks, okay? Over the first week, they had them do their normal routine. What that means is they had them go to work, they had them go to school, they had them do their just normal thing with their personal devices and everything like that, okay? Then the second week, they stripped them of all their personal devices, their laptops, their phones, their computers, everything like that, iPads, you name it. And they had them camp for a week. So the only light that they were exposed to was natural light and possibly a little bit from campfires, no artificial light at all. What they found at the end of just one week of doing that was that it shifted their metabolic clock, it shifted their circadian rhythm two hours, ultimately putting it in line with the solar timing, putting it in line with the sun. And you might be wondering, well, I don't necessarily want to get up when the sun goes up and I don't want to go to bed when the sun goes down. That's not necessarily the case. Researchers concluded that it shifted the internal clock by two hours. So it didn't necessarily mean that you only got up with the sun. It shifted the clock, made it so you just got up two hours earlier, essentially, on average. The other thing that it did is it shifted the offset of melatonin by over 50 minutes. So melatonin is a neurotransmitter. Melatonin is something that helps you fall asleep. If you've ever taken a melatonin supplement, it triggers your brain to relax and go into sleep mode. Well, shortly before you get up, melatonin starts to wane. And when that melatonin wanes, you gradually start to wake up. If melatonin starts to wane off earlier in the morning, that means that you're gonna be able to get up bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and be ready to take on your day that much easier. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is delaying your coffee consumption by about 45 minutes. This is very strategic because when you first get up, you have a natural catecholamine response. You have a natural influx of adrenaline, a natural influx of cortisol, a natural influx of epinephrine that is allowing you to get up and get active and wake up, okay? Get moving. If you go ahead and you take caffeine right when you wake up and you're not a morning person, it stunts that process a little bit. You see, you're artificially, exogenously getting all that adrenaline, all that epinephrine going. But you're also blocking what are called your adenosine receptors. Your adenosine receptors are what retrieve adenosine and ultimately make you fatigued. Caffeine blocks those receptors. 
So if you block those receptors right out the gate, your brain has no way to truly adapt with the grogginess. It can't metabolize the grogginess, for lack of a better term. You almost want your body to be able to adjust and naturally adapt to that grogginess. I'm all for caffeine. I consume a fair bit of it. But I think that if you are not a morning person, you should shift it to about 45 minutes after you get up. If you are a morning person, do your coffee routine as usual. And that leads me into the next one. Do a little bit of high intensity interval training if you're not a morning person, okay? If you are a morning person, go ahead and go with your steady state cardio or do whatever you do first thing in the morning. But if you're not a morning person, five or 10 minutes of high intensity interval training gets, again, those catecholamines going. It gets adrenaline, noradrenaline, epinephrine, norepinephrine, cortisol, it gets them going and that's going to simulate the same caffeine response that you would get. So you are better off doing HIIT cardio in the morning if you're not a morning person. Anyway, there's four simple tips that you can start implementing that will, I promise you, start to make it easier to become a morning person. I can almost guarantee that if you do this for about three weeks, you're gonna find that you just start getting up earlier. Now, the caveat being, I don't expect you to go out camping for a solid week, but I do expect you to start getting a little bit more natural light. It makes a big, big difference. And that means shutting off the phone a little bit before bed. That means getting outside a couple times per day, even if you work in the office, even if it's just for five or six minutes. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos or you like more mindset topics or just lifestyle topics, go ahead and put them down in the comment section below. So I'm an open book. I'm happy to share my tips and tricks. See you in the next video.